hope you are doing really well. I am today because not only have I got Sophie with me. Hi Sophie. Hello. Hi. We're in Wiltshire, big tick for me. We are doing a long barrow, massive tick for me because that's in my history geeky zone of loving. As probably most of you aware, actually, that's my specialty. Start of 10, long barrows, bowl barrows, barrows. Um, we are at Land Hill today. I think that's how we're going to call it. Land Hill, just outside Chippenham in Wiltshire. What's this? Actually, what did it say? Chippenham non parish? Without parish. Without parish, technically. And we are here. It's, it's, it's interesting. Enjoy your history lesson. But we're just going to explore it outside that history lesson. There's not much that survives, but it's very interesting. And because we're in Wiltshire, which has got many of a barrow site to behold, this one's probably one of the most sort of out of the way type of ones. Anyway, stay with us. Let's explore. Yeah. Situated in Wiltshire lies one of the more hidden Long Barrow sites that you can find, that of Land Hill Long Barrow, or also known as Huber's Low. This Neolithic chambered Long Barrow measures as the Barrow Mound being 55 metres long, 25 metres wide and 1.5 metres high. A dry stone entrance on the south side of the mound leads into a small chamber, around two meters square with two further chambers being recorded on the north side of the mound. Constructed around 5,000 years ago it was during excavations in 1909 that several human skeletons were found in the chambers however only the southernmost burial chamber survives today. The burial chamber contained the remains of scattered bones of two adults in a chamber on the north side of the mound nine skeletons in a chamber on the northwest side and 11 skeletons in a further chamber as well as a variety of grave goods including pottery, flint tools and jewellery. The grave goods suggest that the barrow was used for communal burials over a long period of time. Now it stands as one of the best preserved long barrows in the Cotswold 7 group and is a scheduled ancient monument. And now, with a video to document this sacred site, I thoroughly recommend you should visit this place, should you be in the area. Welcome back. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed that wonderful history lesson, although short and brief, it really provided hopefully a good snapshot of where we are and what we are looking at more importantly as you're aware of it's being reinforced to sort of like basically support the sort of capstone really and um, from it sort of seeing you've actually had to look inside i've not yeah. properly what's it look like um, so, for the reference say so yes say so lintel now reinforced with the capstone it says yeah it's all shelled up on the inside so bricked up so you can't get any further but say so it's see is how old and yeah interesting it's um and obviously if we look behind us and what we're talking about you can see really the the sort of like the again how they've sort of tried to mm. really delineate this obviously we're bearing in mind where we are in correlation stuff we're obviously west kennet long barrow obviously if you've seen on my channel silbury hill avebury that whole area obviously west kennet barrow long barrow if you want to find that on my channel i really recommend you watch that because that is easily one of the best long barrow sites that we have Pretty much in the southeast. Well, no, southeast. We're, we, we, sure, of course, we're in the west. <laughs> Do you know what? Isn't it? Long day. All day. Just, we've, <laughs> we, know, we, we don't even know where we are <laughs> most of the time. Um, we had it planned, but yeah. Um, but yeah, Lombardy, beautiful. Mm. Um, and it's just again, like the thing is, sorry, I like it's. Well, I mean, what more can you say? So, this chamber inside is just. Oh, special i'm gonna try and get in there but as you can see it's stinging it all there obviously doing a great job of nature protecting it but i would love to just just get in there just for the sake of having a look originally like i said the chambers you know we've got to understand that long barrow sites obviously these mounds and obviously normally within chambers um it's really hard but on this one actually it's quite easy to see the barrow site the raised part of it and again 
in theory, this would have stood out for miles and miles and miles, really, for its mound. But what is even more stranger than this is that you can hear the road because the road is so close to this. It's crazy. Like, you know, you talk about... Well, actually, funny enough, we drove past Stonehenge today and we said the same thing, which was, it's amazing how close that road is and how... It's, it's obviously we know depending on your viewpoint of Stonehenge we, we find it personally quite sad that you can't get anywhere close to it anymore no. and within living memory especially my parents and obviously yours as well like they would have remembered that you would see footage or at least been there at least I mean, especially in my parents case going there and actually being able to visit visit so we have to take advantage of these types of sites although not hinges but still important in the landscape that we need to take advantage of the fact that we are in this area and it's our great 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 ancestors that built these to signify what death would have been and the importance of it and like we said before you know one of the reasons why i love this period of history is because a lot of it is speculation we we we, we do believe that we've got a rough idea of how we celebrate how they celebrated the dead and how they looked after them but there is still a lot of unanswered questions, which is what I love about these types of sites, because really it brings us back, regardless, it brings us back to our viewpoint and our love of nature. And the fact that really back then nature was law, the seasons were law, in terms of we had to respect the seasons. If you didn't get a good crop, you couldn't survive. And again, as we said with Coldrum Lombara, for example, in our neck of the woods, a beautifully preserved Lombaro there that that we automatically when we see those beautiful sites we automatically assume that they would have been for kings and queens in fact they were for landowners because they were really the ones who would have been in charge if you didn't get your food you couldn't eat so you had to rely on those people those agricultural people to provide and you know whatever we believe in that it's a, just history like this is just the most beautiful thing you could ever find so we're gonna i'm gonna take a look in for all of you and be as respectful as possible more importantly because obviously we have to in these instances so let's take a look inside so there's a cactus in here <laughs> what <laughs> there's actually a little cacti oh. yeah of all the of all the things you normally would sort of see i don't really think a cactus is necessarily the thing especially sprinkled with some acorns there's a lovely little uh, field spider there as well don't worry so because i know you're going to come in here those field spiders are all right the cave ones are the naughty ones again let's have a look in here oh trying not to hit my head because as you can see it's um yeah Look at that. I tell you what, it's a. Uh, the moment you're in here, whatever your spiritual belief, everybody, I definitely feel a calmness, which I, funny enough, said I mentioned actually when I was at West Kennet. The moment you sort of enter into these types of places, there is an element of calm, believe it or not. And, um, yeah, even though I'm crouched down and in an uncomfortable position, I actually feel really calm when I'm in here. You can see, as Sophie kindly pointed out, the reinforcement here as well but um i am spoilt today with this one because this really is this is like i said this is up my tree history wise this is my kind of love and uh yeah oh right so i do believe it's going to be your turn i think so as we always say we only live once if you ever get an opportunity to come into a place like this no matter how small and cramped <laughs> i think you should do it let's see if there's anything else no just a few yeah thank you all right a few cones, pine cones or acorns or whatever they are, uh, pine cones I should mention, I think they are. Anyway, I'm going to head out. I'm going to head up now and take a look. Oh. Because we know, well, you noted, didn't you? The tree had fallen over mm. on top, and uh, like I said, the road is right here. Mm. 
and as you saw when we crossed there was some foot there are you know it's, it's there are public footpaths we're not sort of doing anything sort of out of the way can we go is there any path there or not really or uh, kind of sort of have a look oh. a little bit you know underfoot but i think we'll just stay here because we'll head back down that way i think because does look a little bit sketchy in terms of don't really want to make any new trails we don't need to see how the it's shaped the barrow really like amazingly well like you said when you're in there it's beautifully quiet like almost like it's just completely dead in the sound when you're in there well it feels like it anyway The fact that this survives is remarkable, really. It's crazy because the weather's been against us and then all of a sudden we've come here and although it looks a little bit dark on the camera, I can, I can assure you that it's actually coming out quite bright now. Really nice. All right, let's head back down. Come on in, Sophie. Look at all these beautiful buttercups. Seriously, what you got, love? Nice. <sighs> By the way, just a heads up, parking is a is a nightmare here. Um, really, what you're parking on isn't really a, a parking space necessarily. And because the road does get quite busy, it's at your own risk, really. Unless you want to park a little bit further away. Actually, no, there's a car, there's a car parking yeah. laid by a little bit further back, but I don't know how much a walk that's going to be. But what we'll do is we will walk back the way we came, I do believe. Just to sort of do that for you and just hopefully just give you this perspective. Like I said, unfortunately, when it comes to these types of sites, it's just they're always going to be difficult to sort of put in full context, but hopefully you appreciate the fact that it's about documentation and doing what we can. So. Let's just uh, keep going and then uh, see you uh, once we're done. Well, as we make our way away from the amazing Lombaro, thoughts? Really peaceful and quiet and serene. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. No, I agree. Really in the, we're really in the throes of nature here, even though mm. like the road, you know, you can easily actually just switch off from that sound. Mm. Yeah, the, birds. <laughs> the birds agree. Thank you, Sophie, for coming along with me. That was a real pleasure. I really, I really enjoyed Sophie's company for today, um, and the many adventures that hopefully you will be seeing with Sophie, which is very good. Thank you, as always, for coming along with us. Hopefully, you enjoyed that beautiful video on a beautiful place uh, in Wiltshire. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Any more words of Phoenix history? Because history matters, and I think we can all safely say that in this occasion, it very much does. Take care, everybody. Feel free to spread the word channel. Much love to all of you out there. And uh, we will see you all very soon. Are you ready? Yes. Let us kapow. Bye.